Well then, Fernando Alonso kicks off our brand new My Team episode by announcing retirement from Formula 1 at the conclusion of this first season here in our F1 career mode. Hello everybody and welcome back to our brand new episode of our F1 22 My Team career mode. Starting off with a bit of a surprise as Fernando Alonso has announced retirement at the conclusion of this first season, which makes me wonder what's going to happen with our teammate of Oscar Piastri. As you guys know, uh, not only myself, but Oscar Piastri was actually loaned from Alpine to drive for track cars just like I was loaned from the Red Bull Racing Program to drive for Trackhouse. So, uh, could maybe Alpine steal Piastri from us here at Trackhouse Racing? It's going to be really interesting uh, to see what Justin Marks, our team owner, is going to do about that. But uh, coming off of a 19th place result in a, a rough spa weekend here, it wasn't great for us. We knew we were going to struggle in that race, and we were now heading into the Dutch GP here in Zandvoort, a circuit that, uh, uh, another one that I've never really enjoyed in the past games of the past, what few games it's been on the uh, schedule now, uh, but I once again kind of like Hungary. Didn't enjoy Hungary very much in the past, but I really enjoyed it in this game uh, with the career mode episode we did, and it kind of became the same vibe here in Zandvoort. I've been really enjoying every single track so far uh, in this game, and hopefully that continues here in the last quarter of the season. Really looking forward to getting to Abu Dhabi. That's the final track with a new uh, layout that we have to test out as well, and I, like I said, cannot wait uh, till we get to that point uh, and see what happens there. And unfortunately, though, not looking like we're going to have a championship that goes down towards the end. Leclerc has been running away, and I expect to see the same thing here. I'm going to predict early that he's going to win uh, the championship as soon as the United States Grand Prix this season. Uh, kind of like what Lewis Hamilton did all the way back in, I think, 2015 here now as we come through into practice. And we were having some decent pace here in the car. It was taking me a, a few laps to really kind of get a pace worked out here uh, in Zandvoort. But we kind of found our flow here pretty well, and, and things were starting starting to just mesh and gel together uh, and we were putting up a decent time now but uh, as well uh, from what it sounds like in the next episode we might actually be getting some regulation changes announced so we might not be focusing on upgrading this car for the rest of the season so kind of what we're bringing into this weekend and in the next couple weekends is as far as we're going to be able to go especially going into the Italian GP in the next episode which I am extremely concerned about with the straight line speed we've got a couple more upgrades on the way but I think those are going to be the final upgrades we make to this car this season based off of uh, Tom of what we're hearing back at headquarters with some new regulation changes being announced. I put up a straw poll in the last episode actually for the V8 engines and there'll be an announcement coming on that here in the next uh, few episodes as well uh, with about F1's decision on that. From the sounds of it, we are going to have V8 engines probably in Season 2, but Season 3, because Season 2 is already almost here. It feels like it would be really early in the game cycle to, to go and drastically change uh, the engine sound, so we'll have to wait and see. But we'll come through into qualifying. We're not expecting to take no grid penalties this weekend, thankfully, but I kind of got messed up right there by George Russell, and then I completely uh, botched the banked hairpin right there, and this first lap ended up pretty rough here now, uh, as Russell actually putting some pressure on me here into the left-hander as well. He was being a bit of a, a menace here on a cool-down lap, uh, it was, by the way, for George, uh, George Russell, but we come through to cross the line, briefly going P6, but there was some pace in this car. I was pretty confident with how we were uh, feeling so far, so we come through for our second attempt a little bit later on towards the end of the session immediately. Immediately, we find a little bit extra time in the car right there, about two tenths better, uh, just about into the hairpin. I make a mistake in the hairpin again, but we actually somehow managed to still gain time. Now we're about three tenths up uh, on our last lap, coming up on Kevin Magnuson here on the Haas. Fortunately, we catch him at a good spot. We were able to get around him without any issues whatsoever. About half a second now uh, in the bag here as we come through to the final corner, and we would be about four and a half tenths better overall. So we're going to come through to cross the line, and that puts us P7. We're not going to end up P7, obviously, but. But we would advance to Q2 for the first time in a while. Uh, as you can see, the rest of the order there. And unfortunately, Piastri all the way down to P21. What a difference between myself and Piastri. And uh, once again, it always seems like one track house car is doing really good. One's having a rough time. And same for Williams. Albon was able to advance to Q2 as well. So into our Q2 lap, we knew we weren't going to be able to go and, and put a banger lap in and, and make it into Q3. It was just about, you know, putting a lap down here. Now it's actually, we make a big error there. And we crash out of qualifying. So maybe, uh, you know, Know, not even putting a lap down there because I just absolutely bend the car. An unexpected moment. I did go wide in the right hander there. You saw it, and then I was just hoping I could throttle up and kind of still try and, and make some time up here, not lose too much. And well, unfortunately, we pay the price for that, uh, and I wrecked the car here. So uh, unfortunately, we don't even get to put a lap down now. Thank goodness the team is going to be able to get the car repaired in time for the Grand Prix. But that will mean we will start P15 from the uh, Dutch GP here, which is exactly what I was expecting. 
expecting even if we were able to get a lap in. But unfortunately, uh, not, the, not the way we wanted to end qualifying here with a big accident uh, in Q2. A mistake right there, right there that hopefully we do not make in the actual Grand Prix itself. Sorry, P16. I forget. P16 uh, here is uh, we get 16 cars that move forward into Q2. So nonetheless, so let's head to the grid here for the Dutch GP. Hopefully we can move forward in the first couple of laps. For years, the passionate Dutch fans have been easy to find trackside in races across Europe. Here this weekend, it's even easier to find the Dutch fans as they have a race to call their own once again. A warm welcome to all of our viewers in the Netherlands and around the globe, of course, as we get underway for the Dutch Grand Prix. Four lefts and 10 rights make up the 14 corners of the narrow and demanding Zandvoort circuit, with plenty of peaks and valleys over the course of the 2.6 mile lap, which will demand absolute concentration from our drivers here today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Bottas, Fernando Alonso, and Ocon, Mick Schumacher, Hamilton, Joe, and Golden Boy, Gasly, Vettel, Lance Stroll, and Norris. They've taken a grid penalty. Ricardo, Magnussen, Yuki Tsunoda, and Alex Albon. Oscar Piastri, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Latifi, Verstappen, and George Russell ends our grid lineup. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. And a warm welcome to Natalie Pinkham, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Why don't we discuss Red Bull? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. How about that? We're up to P10 after some grid penalties here, and actually we're changing things up. We're not starting on the medium compound tire. I know it might come as a shock to everybody. We're on the soft compound to hard compound strategy this time, so they're confident we can actually take the softs long enough to do a one-stop as well. Uh, so hopefully it works out for us here in the Dutch GP. Now as we get ready to go green here now from P10 on the grid after those grid penalties. Very excited for our best start of the season. Uh, how is it going to go though? The lunge down into turn one going to be so important right here in the midfield now as we have an opportunity today to get a really nice result with just a fortune that's been on our side here for the start of this Grand Prix now as we actually have to wait much longer than usual here uh, for the lights to come up and there we go ready to go lights out here from the Dutch GP in Zandvoort and it's going to be lights out and we are underway Leclerc and Sainz lead the way down into turn one and it's a great start for both of the Ferraris you see uh, Perez in behind Verstappen one of the drivers with a grid penalty here so he is going to have to work his way through the traffic now as we come through out of turn one sideways, three wide, we're crashing into the outside barrier, and it's going to be myself, Gasly, as well as Sebastian Vettel that have all crashed, and it was a mistake on my end, as I lost a rear end on the exit of turn one, and while I was trying to save it, I correct back to left, right there, you see it, and while we are three wide, Vettel is right there on my left rear, we go crashing on board with Sebastian Vettel, and you saw right there, not much any of us could do as soon as I lost uh, traction, just too much power on the exit of turn one, and Unfortunately, we all get collected. Virtual safety car would come out, but we're all just rushing to the back of the uh, pit lane here at the conclusion of lap one. No full-blown safety car, which was very surprising. So we come into our pit box here for now the hard compound, town, uh, compound tire, and actually they're going to struggle to get the front wing on here, which is, uh, I knew we could have pit errors, but I never thought the front wing would be a, a pit error, but nonetheless, that cost us a little bit more time, but the damage is done. We destroyed the front wing. We have underbody damage. We have side pod damage. We are in for now a rough GP after just one lap here in Zandvoort. There you saw the damage right there. Uh, just a big shunt from myself going three wide into turn one, which that wasn't even an issue. It was me just getting sideways. Uh, and unfortunately, while trying to save it, our car pulls back to the left right across Sebastian Vettel. Vettel, uh, as well as Gasly, they went on to the uh, soft compound tire, but I decided to go on the hard compound because I was confident we could just take these tires to the end of the race here. But very unfortunate. Uh, and the only way we get back in this race is the safety car. I was confident even with the... Uh, 
uh, you know, the floor damage uh, as well as the side pod damage uh, that we could still uh, have a decent pace here now is actually now while we wait to hopefully get a safety car, we're going to pay a lot of attention uh, to what's going on throughout the rest of the field since we are so far off. And actually, you see George Russell uh, as well as uh, Max Verstappen. They're both trying to work their way through the field with their grid, uh, grid penalties that they picked up here after qualifying. You can see Russell wheel to wheel with K-Mag in the Haas and uh, as well Verstappen just behind Albon there. So they're both trying to quickly man maneuver their way through this pack now. As you can see, Verstappen contact actually with Albon here on lap 8 into turn 1. Carlos Sainz leading the way continuously uh, after getting uh, into turn 1 before Leclerc after starting on pole for I think what might be the first time this season now. As you see, Russell uh, lap 9 actually going around the outside there of Lance Stroll. So there's another pass for Russell up to P13 and Verstappen continues to just kind of follow through. Uh, he would now be making a move up the inside of Magnussen here in the Haas and up to 15th he goes. So these two were slicing their way through the field, making passing uh, at Zandvoort look extremely easy to lap now 11. Russell now making a pass on Yuki Tsunoda. Some drivers actually coming into the pit lane here uh, as well though Russell up the inside on the exit of the corner. You guys know uh, based off of 2021, Yuki Tsunoda not going to make it easy for a Mercedes car to get past, but actually Russell able to quite easily uh, complete the pass. There's a C. Schumacher and Ocon as well as Lance Stroll and Albon all putting on the hard compound tires now as we come through to myself here on an update on lap 10, hoping for that safety car. Yellow flags are out actually into turn one. It's Pierre Gasly who was a part of that lap one incident with myself who's going to be pulling off to the side of the track there. A, a mechanical failure there for Gasly. He is out of the race. No safety car unfortunately. So we continue on just all on my lonesome here uh, in P21. My uh, kind of mindset was I was going to drive until we get lapped because if we get lapped and there's no safety car, we're just going to retire the car to try and save some resources here. As you can see, Charles Leclerc is actually going to go around the outside of Carlos Sainz here in lap 13 and take the lead of the Dutch GP. Perez in the background in P3 trying to get in on the uh, paddle. Uh, as you see to lap 14, come to 15. Here comes Russell again, still bringing Verstappen with him. He's going to go up the inside of Lando Norris. Two friends going wheel to wheel here. Three friends, really. I mean, Norris, great friends, of course, with Verstappen. Not sure how much Russell is with Verstappen. Nonetheless, though, Norris able to hold off Russell. So Russell had to give him another shot here on lap 16 again into turn one. And Verstappen and gets ever so closer here and again Norris holds off Russell uh, as pit stops were now starting to kick off Alonso was in here into lap 17 again Russell trying to complete the pass on Lando Norris here now and will it finally happen Norris has not made it easy definitely been the most difficult driver uh, for Russell uh, to pass so far but it looks like maybe he's going to pull it off no because he actually goes wide into the banked hairpin and Norris stays ahead and Verstappen is actually going to go through as well uh, as pit stops continue to kick off with Charles Leclerc, your leader, into the pits for that hard compound tire Bontas as well uh, as Lewis Hamilton going to come in here just behind them, but Ferrari are in a bit of a league of their own, although Perez is able to remain up there with them here, as you can see Bontas coming in for that hard compound tire. I'm hoping still at this point uh, for a safety car, because as this pit cycle is happening, I don't have to come into the pits because, like I said, my plan is to go to the end of the Grand Prix without making a pit stop, but uh, even when these guys all cycle out, I am nowhere near close to them because of all the time we lost on that opening lap there uh, unfortunately now as we continue to watch lap 19 Max Verstappen actually goes wide and into the gravel that was after pit stops and he was actually out behind Russell and then the same lap Valtteri Bontas actually uh, has a spin here in the final sector so uh, a couple of moments here on this 19th lap that don't result in anything happening uh, unfortunately for me now but here comes Charles Leclerc uh, trying to actually get back in the lead but no Sainz is going to win the race out of the pit lane so Carlos Sainz uh, the overcut works here on that hard compound tire for Carlos Sainz the Spaniard but he's on those cold tires while well, Leclerc's tires they are warmed up for an extra lap here goes Leclerc to the left side you do not go side by side through this section it is so sketchy uh, it's so easy to screw it up by yourself you saw that from myself in qualifying right through this section but Leclerc with a demanding move to the outside is going to go around Carlos Sainz take the lead of the Grand Prix all over again and I'm sure it's going to have a runaway victory unless something goes catastrophically wrong for Charles Leclerc at this point here as you see myself on lap 20 just you know, minding my own business at this point, realizing I don't think that safety car is going to actually come out, unfortunately, here. Just hoping something happens for somebody. But I was uh, getting ready to retire the car once I said, like, once we go a lap down here, there's no point because we're not going to get a lap back. And if we do go a lap down, it's probably going to be within the final 10 laps here. So uh, just save some parts here and, and retire the car for the third time this season. George Russell now around the outside of Daniel Ricciardo, potentially during the pit cycle. They did get past Lando Norris, uh, and now he has to fight his McLaren teammate, the Australian, now and actually a lot 
easier Ricardo is for Russell there. And actually, here comes Max Verstappen. Going to try and follow through as well here. Going to be wheel to wheel with former teammate at Red Bull Racing of Daniel Ricardo And uh, Verstappen is a bit of a slipstream right there from the Mercedes for a few moments. But they continue wheel to wheel here into the right-hander. Again, you do not want to be side by side through here whatsoever. And oh my goodness, what a daring move from Verstappen and both Ricardo. And Verstappen comes out on top there. Takes a position from Daniel Ricardo now as we come through uh, to lap 27 for a bit of a late race update here. Coming to these final 10 laps, Perez, Hamilton, third and fourth, Alonso and Ocon, the Alpine duo of fifth and sixth. Once again, uh, Alpine, I feel like I've said it every episode, doing fantastic. But now we know Fernando Alonso uh, is retiring from Formula 1 at the conclusion of the season. So I'm hopeful we can see him uh, at least sneak into a podium or something before the season uh, comes to a close. Alonso actually uh, retired at the end of the first season in my F1 2021 career mode. So kind of disappointing uh, that both games I've done, he's actually called it a career at the end of both season one. I would like to see him go a little bit longer, but uh, not going to have that luxury this time around. So uh, Alonso calling it a career, like we said at the conclusion of the season, we'll miss him very much as AI that is. And what if Fernando Alonso maybe, you know, sticks around in Formula One in, in a different kind of role here on this My Team career mode? You'll have to wait and see on that one now uh, as we continue to just, uh, you know, accept our, our, our fate at this point here. We're running dead last uh, of the cars that are still on the circuit and uh, coming to lap uh, 30, Leclerc is sure enough does put me a lap down. So at this point, uh, the team actually calls me in uh, and we're going to come in and retire the car. That's really the only thing we can do at this point. There's no gain staying out here and wasting resources for the remainder of this race. And uh, unfortunately, all of this came from my mistake on the opening lap there with that three wide move into turn one uh, and getting loose on the exit of that corner. So unfortunately, we are going to have to retire here from the Dutch GP as we come into our box and, and call it a day. Uh, did not want to call it a day like this. It's unfortunate, uh, but sometimes it's the way Formula One goes for these drivers and today we were the victim of that. And actually, we were going to run out of fuel probably if we uh, stayed up for the rest of the race as well. So that certainly wouldn't have helped. But let's head to the podium celebrations. So another excellent win from Ferrari. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out of the track was. Speed. It sounds like an awfully reductive statement, but fast cars win races. And we saw that today with our winner. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. Charles Leclerc wins again. Shocker there. I mean, an absolute tear he has been on all season long. And uh, if you're Max Verstappen, unfortunately, you got a grid penalty today. So you weren't able to get as good of a finish as you certainly could have uh, while Leclerc is out there winning again. So, I mean... Leclerc is going to have to have probably the worst luck I've ever seen in Formula 1 if he's going to lose the World Drivers Championship at this point. So uh, it's going to need to be a miracle for both Carlos Sainz or Max Verstappen here to try and, and bring down Charles Leclerc, who's been absolutely unbelievable uh, here so far this season. And that's why I'm actually looking forward even more to these potential regulation changes uh, coming into Season 2, which you guys will know for sure if we have regulation changes announced or not in the next episode. Uh, so stay tuned on that as you see the finishing order on your screen. Now Leclerc uh, has a 114 point lead. Signs actually, I didn't even realize, Signs is losing to Hamilton in the standings. So, uh, yeah, I mean, actually it's Lewis Hamilton having a strong run there in P3. So, shout out to Lewis Hamilton here, uh, who's, who's had quite a few podiums this season as well here, doing a decent job, but he's running out of time to get a win here. Uh, he's won in every season in Formula 1 that he's competed in, and right now, like I said, running out of time to make that happen. You see, actually, uh, upgrading the quality control right there on the powertrain facility, and and as well, you see, these are probably the final upgrades that are coming to our car. They're both major upgrades that should hopefully put us dead even with Williams. But those will probably be the final couple of upgrades to this car this season as we plan to focus uh, on our next season's car, considering there's potential regulation changes coming. But I'll know for sure on the plan of that going into the next episode in the Italian GP. And if that is sure enough the case that we're getting regulation changes, we might make one or two upgrades, but that will be it. We're going to focus everything on making sure we can adapt parts and prepare for season two and hopefully that will make a huge difference for our car in that second season that's going to do it for me if you guys enjoyed you know what to do in the next one we head to the italian gp should be an interesting one thank you all for watching i'll see you guys next time have a great day everybody